here. And yeah, yeah, I will answer you now also. Sorry. Uh, uh, you know, first, I think, not that I, it's the first time in my life I like this, that I was accused of being a social democrat. Usually I'm accused of even the Greek press, you told me, accused me that you come to me so that they give you secret instructions how if you win you will introduce police state in Greece and so on. But I would nonetheless like to say this, when you painted the social democracy as the ultimate catastrophe and so on and so on. Yeah, but let's be frank, the so-called Stalinist state socialism was also a no less mega catastrophe than social democracy. Sorry to tell you. Last thing, now comes the truly problematic point. I think, and this will be something that many of you will not agree, as much as I support, as long as it goes, this dream of non-representative, immediate democracy, and so on and so on, I don't believe that different forms of local self-organization and so on, whatever, or communal cooperations and so on, have the potentials to universalize themselves. I'm here, shamelessly I'm saying, saying back from Marx to Hegel. We need to reinvent the state. We need more than ever a strong regulative state. I wish you all the well with your Crete uh, commune, and it will be maybe a nice tourist attraction, like they are now the Zapatista. You know, they had their leader in Mexico, uh, 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 Subcomandante Marcos. Now, it's fully, in a fully justified way, he is now called Subcomandante Marcos, because he... Sorry, no, I seriously mean it. What do you believe in? That there will be some kind of direct sense that local communes with... Be that? Yeah. And I know what I'm talking about. I was there. It, it, the moment he started to play moral authority, he was totally integrated. They love him. The most corrupted politicians love him and so on and so on. It's, for me, intellectual purism. It lost the moment, the path he has cho chosen. Here, I must say, I'm totally opposed to his official ideologies. Who was here, I think? John Holloway or who? No? I was not here. No. Oh, no, sorry, I met him in London, yes. Who said, let's, for example, Holloway also tried to appropriate the Greece protest. He said, I was in Greece and it was wonderful. A park was Libera proclaimed liberated zone uh, and they put an end they put on the entrance gate to a park in Athens an inscription entrance prohibited to capitalism and so on and I answered him if I were to be the most corrupted capitalist I would support the idea of these parks it's wonderful you have a closed space where people feel to be free so that then they work even better on Monday when they return to their office. You see, that's what I'm saying. I think that the greatest, most dangerous dream of the left was precisely this idea of some type of immediate self-transparency, direct democracy, where finally people will get rid of all alienated forums and so on, and directly self-organize themselves. Show me one, only one example where it, wor where it worked for more than two, three months. <laughs> huh? Yes, for two months, yes. For two months, yes. I don't want that. I want him to be in power, <laughs> sorry, for life. <laughs> I want him to be re-elected with Stalinist numbers, like, okay, not Saddam numbers, not 101%. <laughs> yeah. No, no, I'm quite serious here, because, you know, that's what I was saying before. I don't like this enthusiastic moment, oh, for two months people are in power, and then what? And then you meet once a year in a cafeteria and have nostalgic memories, how wonderful they were those months. But then in the middle of those nostalgic memories, your uh, phone rang, sorry, I have to run back to my bank now, the boss is calling me, and so on. I want the left to offer an actual alternative for the daily life after the, when the enthusiasm is over, I went, want the left to be able to change things at the most everyday common life level. You cannot have all the time this 
enthusiastic participatory democracy uh, mobilization. Let's be frank. I don't want to be mobilized politically all the time. I want an anonymous power which, in a relatively efficient, non-corrupted way, does its job so that I can do my crazy philosophy and maybe your president can do his boring symphonies or whatever <laughs> he's doing. I mean, you see, you see my point? That's for me the true challenge of the left. Don't fall in love with this enthusiastic moment of, oh, it's immediate democracy. Yes, it is for two months. Give me any other. What will you tell me? Cultural revolution in China or whatever. Give me one example where it worked so that it also survived passage to, how should I call it, when things return to normal. I'm just saying that I have serious doubts that this immediate, as the Germans call it, Rete Republic, that immediate uh, council Soviet organization, that it has the potential to universalize itself. For example, I was in Latin America. I know the situation. I spoke with Linera, who it said that he's not here, he's in my friend. And he, he made this clear to me that he told me that with all this local self-organization that they have in Bolivia, he told me that his big lesson is that to have a really functioning local direct democracy, you need a very well organized state background providing basic safety, uh, the whole educational system, and so on and so on. Now, I'm not saying we should keep the old bourgeois state. I'm saying we should reinvent also these large-scale mechanisms. I'm sorry, I was on purpose trying to provoke you.